Welcome guys, or welcome back to the Crafting Spiral podcast. My name is Amanda, and this is where I like to talk about my knitting, and um, crocheting, and cross-stitching, and sewing, and basically anything fiber arts related. Um, and I have a lot of finished objects to show you guys that you haven't even seen um, before. And yeah, let's just actually get started because I'm really excited to talk about them. <laughs> Um, it's been a while since I recorded, it feels like. I do this every month, but sometimes there's a lot more time in between. Um, I think I did my last podcast at the beginning of August instead of at the end, and it's kind of mid-September, so. Um, anyway, I said let's get started. Let's get started. <laughs> what I'm wearing. This is not a new finished object. This is just something that I really wanted to wear today because I've got the windows open. It's just the right temperature, not too hot, not too cold. Um, and it's a really good day to just wear um, like a bralette top. So this is the Aphrodite bralette by... I, I wrote down the page that this goes on and I knew I was going to talk about it. Why didn't I have it open? Um, welcome to the nonsense of this channel. So this is by Soapy Knit, and um, I made it out of Kelsey from Knitting Nakabi's Herbology Base for April, which that theme was chamomile, so this was dyed with chamomile. And I'm actually purposely wearing this inside out, because it could be worn inside out. It's a twisted rib detail all around the back, and then it's got like this um, twisted rib that goes between the two cups and it has um, increases and decreases to give it the, sh the cups more of a shape. And it's super comfy and I love just wearing it around the house. So I thought I would actually wear it and show you guys what it looks like because I didn't, I don't think I tried it on when I showed you this as a finished object. So here it is. I love it. It is very, very comfortable. Um, and also it'll be a lot easier for me to try on my sweaters to show you guys with a, thinner and less bulky layer. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna get very hot very quickly with some of these because they're very wooly. <laughs> um, yeah, so that is my what I'm wearing and so let's go ahead and just get started talking about the sweaters. Uh, actually, you know what? Let's talk about what you guys have seen before as a finished object, which is just one thing. It's my sister's new baby that is coming in October. I made, uh, I made him a baby blanket. I finished it quite a while ago, actually, like basically right after I got done recording last podcast. <laughs> it's it's got train details on it. On the bottom, and I also reversed it on the um, other bottom of it. The pattern didn't actually call for that, but I thought it would be cute to have um, the train detail on both sides. This, by the way, is called um, Shoof Shoof by Filomena Lanzara, and one of you lovely commenters actually did answer, Shoof Shoof doesn't stand for Choo Choo, it stands for Chug Chug, so that's really cool. Yeah, I like it, and I made it out of Knit Picks um, Heatherly, some yarn here. It picks Heatherly. I had a whole skein and like basically half of a skein left um, of it. I bought three, I think. So, yeah, I mean, this blanket took like nothing. I, I might actually end up making the baby some like jumpers or something just because I don't see myself needing to use this for anything. It's a very bright blue and I think it would just be too good of an opportunity to make some baby clothes with it since it is um, mostly acrylic. I think it's 80% acrylic and 20% merino wool. It's very soft and that way my sister can wash it in the washing machine um, if it gets dirty. I really like it. The pattern is, um, I think the pattern, I have more than three I don't think. I can't remember. 
but uh, the, the pattern wasn't originally written in English, so there are some translation issues, but it was easy enough to figure out. Uh, it was mostly reading a chart, which, you know, language barrier doesn't... <laughs> there's no language barrier on a chart, so um, I think that anybody could, could make this. But We'll just go ahead and get that one out of the way, because it's not a sweater, and let's be honest, we all want to talk about sweaters right now. <laughs> So, yep, that's that. And, okay, so my first sweater, you guys heard if you stuck around last podcast for what my future plans were. And it was with this wool from Pearl Soho, good wool. I got this beautiful purple color and a, um, yeah, I have some left. I have two whole skeins left of each color, or one whole skein, I think. Yeah, one whole skein of each color left, so I'm not sure what I'm going to do with these, but this can make a really pretty shawl or something, but anyway, what I made with these <laughs> was this. This is the Witching Hour. Um, supposed to be a swancho, but I will get into some serious modifications in a moment here. Um, but it is the Witching Hour Swancho by, um, Dear Ingenu. She's on Instagram, and they're actually having, her and this yarning is having a, um, a knit-along right now with patterns that have the skulls or their mushrooms on it called the, uh, I believe it's Skulls, skulls and Shrooms Knit-Along 2022. And I am going to take such a cute picture with this and uh, post a finished object so I can enter to win um, the giveaway they're going to do at the end of it. So, But I love this. I, the, I'm a bird person, hence the crafting sparrow name. <laughs> I've always liked birds, so, and I work at an ecology lab that does a lot of bird research. So <laughs> I'm really happy to be wearing this um, soon here when it gets cold enough to and just show off my little bird skulls. <laughs> um, I'll let me try it on and then I'll get into some modification talk. I had to take my glasses off to um, put this on because my bind off, I purpose purposefully made a bit tighter because I can't stand a loose, too loose of a neck. So, let me get to the page on my notebook because, like I said, lots of notifications here. Um, I did use the chart, like I knit the chart exactly how it was. Um, that's about the only thing that I kept. <laughs> I actually cast this on to, um, I realized I didn't talk about the needle size yet or for the blanket, but... Um, the needle size for this, I used a 4mm for the body and a 3.75mm for the, the ribbing. Um, and I did a size large to extra large, but again, I don't really know if that's useful information for anybody that wants to make this. Uh, but if you want to know, my bust circumference is about 38 inches and that was the widest point that I used for which size to make. When I cast this on, I cast it on following a much smaller size and it starts with the collar and then does some short rows um, in the top here and then it goes into the um, the yoked color work with increases and stuff and I got about here I think on um, on the pattern and I realized that my shoulders were gonna be way too wide for it so basically my size was too small um, but also there was a lot of puckering um, between where the single color um, hold on my husband is calling me one second okay so what I was saying is the um, the part where there's no color work and then the color work for the the yoke I found that the the um, purple was like puffing out a little bit, 
and I mean that makes sense because your tension tends to get really tight with color work versus no color work um, so yeah I didn't like the puckeriness of that and also the size was too small so I did a lot of math <laughs> and figured out I I didn't actually swatch either so I wasn't I didn't think that it would be the exact right size <laughs> so basically my first attempt was the swatch I realized my attention was different my gauge was different I mean so I took that into mind and I did some math and I realized that the number of chart repeats that I needed uh, to get the widest point the correct size to fit my arms and my um, bust was the large to extra large Lucy, can you not scratch the carpet right now? <laughs> they always go wild as soon as I start talking to the camera. I don't know why. Anyway, so I ripped all my pro progress out there and I did a provisional cast on starting at the, the beginning of the color work. Um, oh, I, I did the provisional cast on enough stitches to start with the first row of the color work. I think I knit like one row of just the purple and then I immediately started the color work and I did the color work all the way uh, because it is a swancho the arm splits were not supposed to stop until I don't I don't even know where the pattern said to because um, I already knew I was gonna try to alter it into a regular sweater so I'm fairly certain that you split for the arms like all the way down here so instead of doing that, I split it to till, or I stopped and split when I realized that it was wide enough for my shoulders and far enough down for my underarms. I actually could have done it a lot higher, but I'm okay with the way that I did it. Um, so, and, and it actually worked out really nice because there are two skull repeats where I split it so um, I didn't really have to do that much thinking about like how am I gonna split one of the, the motif wedges without making it look weird I didn't want to like split in the middle of a skull like that would have been odd so I was really happy when I realized that halfway from the front and back there were two skull repeats enough and the circumference of it was an, enough to wrap around my arm so it just worked out really nice in that way so I stopped um I don't know exactly where but you can kind of see it was like right at the this part of the beak is where I split and I added let's see Oh, it says I, I split for the sleeves at row 59, so I did run, I did good note taking there. Um, two sections. At, okay, so that's I wrote down how I split it. Again, there were two sections, and um, um, color work. Okay, so I didn't write this down, but I'm fairly. Oh yeah, I did. I add ten stitch. So I added ten stitches. Um, between the last front section and the first back section on both sides. And instead of trying to figure out what kind of chart I should do to like continue the color work chart where the arm was split, I just did like a, a black and white stripe. I thought it continued the like the witchy vibes, um, especially with my color choices. Um, so then I just continued the body. Uh, and once I got to those underarm sections, I just did that, that stripiness. And this also helped me make sure that my stretchiness was going to be nice because when it's just repeating one color to the next, the, it, it doesn't really um, have floats. So it's still like really stretchy under the arm. And I continued till I got done with the color work. I didn't do any decreases or anything. I just knit it until I was happy with it. I knew I wanted it to be just a little bit shorter not super cropped but enough to where like you could if I raise my arm a little bit you could see the top of my jeans um, I like that length and I did just a two by two ribbing at the bottom I stuck with two by two on the collar and the, the sleeves as well and that's the body of it 
And um, my chair is getting stuck. So when I got done with the body, I picked up the sleeves naturally. Um, and again, I just worked through the color work and I did, I think I did 14. I added two on each side. I picked up 14 stitches for the underarm. And yeah, so I did the same thing, color work with the stripes at the bottom until I got done with that. And I liked the circumference of the chart for the rest of the arm. I didn't want to do any decreases. And I kind of regret it, but not really. I think that, I think it would have looked better if I did do creases, de if I did do decreases, <laughs> but I'm still happy with it, so, oh well. Um, and I just worked the sleeves in plain purple until I got to the length I liked, and then I did another two by two ribbing with a, um, this cast off was the, uh, I don't remember what it's called, but it's where you knit one, yarn over, and then uh, knit one, and then draw the first stitch and the yarn over all over the last stitch, and you just repeat that. Um, I like that for, for arms sometimes, if I just want a little bit more stretch. Um, and then lastly, what I did was I picked up the provisional cast, um, cast on for the neck, and I did do some short row shaping in the back. Um, I don't remember exactly how many I did. I think it was probably like six, four to six rows, added rows to the back, um, till I was happy with it. And then I knit around completely. Um, and I actually, I thought that it was a bit too wide at first, so I undid it, redid the short rows, and then actually added some decreases. Um, yeah, I did, I did some decreases. It, it didn't end up in a perfect number for the ribbing to be like two by two all the way to the end. I think there's like a one purl and three knits at the back. <laughs> it's just my sweater. It's not like it's my pattern. So I just did what I was okay with. Um, but I just did some decreases until I was happy with the circumference of the neck hole. And I'm really happy with it. Um, one thing, like I said, I wish I would have done arm decreases because, again, color work has a tighter tension than um, not color work, just one plain color. So the arms, the biceps, are a bit tighter <laughs> than the rest of the arms. It was really, really bad before I blocked it. Like, I was just hoping that the blocking would make a difference and it did but you can still tell that it's a bit tighter it's a bit poofier um right after it i don't know maybe it's not so noticeable i'm looking at my my screen when i look over this way um but i don't know you guys let me know let me know if you think that it's too noticeable i mean it's not like it's gonna matter i'm not gonna rip it out but <laughs> It's still a bit like swancho-y, like I said. It could be a bit further up, but I still like it a lot. It's so cute. There was actually also a bit of color work at the bottom on the original pattern. I think it was like this bit right here, like little white crosses that go along the hem. But I didn't want to further worry about my attention being tighter on the bottom. <laughs> So I just left it out. I mean, I I just really liked the skull anyway, so yeah. Um, so if you like swanchos though, if you like that style, highly recommend this pattern because I think it would be a really cute swancho if that's your style. It's just not my style, so I altered it like heavily. <laughs> she The pattern's written really, really well. Um, because I did skim through it before I started just to like get an idea of how she uh, constructed it. Um, so yeah, recommend the pattern and love the motif. She's got a lot of other stuff with bird skulls and um, there's some like mushroom patterns and stuff. So um, actually, I think it's Dis Yarning. Yeah, Dis Yarning who is in collaboration with um, Dear Ingenue for this knit along. She has um, sock patterns that she worked up 
that is um, a motif, a charted motif for each class in D and D. And I'm like so tempted to make a pair for each person in my D and D campaign, <laughs> but. <clears throat> As you will probably hear soon here, and also if you watched last episode, colorwork socks terrify me. But anyway, <laughs> all that to say, go check those two um, creators and designers out. They're wonderful. They're both on Instagram. So um, yeah, this is my witching hour sweater. <laughs> Not so much. I know that was going to be a long one in one. 20 minutes in and probably like five minutes of that was the blanket and the intro so <laughs> this one took a big chunk of time um let's see what is next oh okay all right so let me take this off and get ready for the next sweater the bind off i did for that was um like i said pretty tight but it's not too bad I'd rather it be too tight and too loose, in my opinion. Um, right there. Scoot my chair in. Okay, so the next one is one you haven't heard about at all, <laughs> or the yarn that I bought. Um, but you may have heard that um, Drops had a huge sale recently on their yarn. And I have been wearing my jacket number one like crazy, which if you don't know, jacket number one's made by My Favorite Things Knitwear. I repurposed the yarn from sweater number 18, um, but it was Drops Air in like a sagey green color. I wear that all the time. The yarn is held up really, really well. Um, so I really wanted to make another garment out of Drops uh, Air in a different color. So I went on there and I bought eight balls of Drops Air in their um, pink marble colorway. Um, and y'all, I'm going to be completely honest with you, like on prices and stuff. This was so cheap. Um, it was like 50% off per ball. And I got eight for like a little over or a little under $30 with shipping from the UK. <laughs> That's, that would just blew my mind. <laughs> Um, so I was really happy with that purchase. I thought that I was going to make the No Frills sweater by Petite Knit because I had already bought that pattern like forever ago. Just as like um, a comfort pattern if I ever wanted to make it, if I had the yarn for it, blah, blah, blah. Um, and so I didn't know exactly what I was going to make out of this yarn. I knew it was going to be either a cardigan or a sweater. I liked the idea of the mindless knit with no frills sweater, but I wasn't really sure if I wanted it to be that mindless, you know? I, I wanted there to be some intrigue with this yarn because I really liked the, um, like, the way that the yarn shows texture because with the jacket number one, it has that altering between different pearls and knits into just, you'll have to go, you'll have to go look at it. It's just like very textured in a simple way with just pearls and knits. Um, so I wanted to do something with texture and I went on Ravelry and looked at Raglan Construction because I knew I wanted to do that and um, yeah that was pretty much all I searched Raglan Construction because I had a crap ton of yarn with eight balls of this stuff so I knew I was basically going to basically gonna be able to do anything um, and I came across the uh, let's see Koyame Pullover by Joanna Ang. Let me just show you guys. <laughs> it's so cute. I have a hard time figuring out which is the front and which is the back though because I think this is the back. Yes, okay. Still simple, like I wanted it to, but look at these cabled arms, you guys. Look at that! It's so pretty. It hasn't been blocked yet, so it'll be a lot like more standout once I block it. I love it so much. All right, let me try it on. And while I do that, let me talk about which needle and size and such that I used. Um, again, drops air, pink marble, and I only had to use five balls for this, so I have three whole balls left over. Um, the needles are five millimeters for everything. 
Um, well, except I used a four millimeter to bind off on the sleeves and the um, the bottom hem just to make it a little bit tighter because this yarn tends to be fairly um, loose, I guess you would say. I don't know, the bind offs tend to be just a little bit looser than I like with this yarn. So yeah, and then I did a size three, which was the, sm so they have like size ranges for your bust because it has positive ease. And um, I sized down because I was kind of in between size three and four. Um, so yeah, size three, five millimeter, and I love it. It's so cute. I followed the pattern exactly how it called for, except for the number of, um, the number of, this isn't really ribbing, I'll get to it in a second, but the cuffs and the, the hem at the bottom, I made a bit shorter than what they said. But everything else is exactly how she said it in the pattern. She, her pattern was beautifully written. Um, but let me give you guys a better look at it. I don't know, this is a very, like, feminine neckline and just like construction it's just the perfect positive ease for me and this adds so much interest and like cozy factor in my opinion and it's just a little bit balloon sleeved but not like an outrageous amount and the sleeves are cinched in just right in my opinion i just love it so much <laughs> i like i want to make more <laughs> Uh, which doesn't happen very often for, uh, it doesn't happen very often for me. I usually just make one version of a design and that's that. But I really want to make more of these. Um, and the construction was so cool. I don't want to like give too much away because it is a paid pattern. But you do the collar and then you do a little bit of like, you just do some of this and then some of this. And then there's short rows here, short rows in the back, and just raglan. And, um, the cable, it was, it was so nice. It was like the perfect blend of mindless stockinette and intrigue to keep you going. Like that potato chippy vibes. Um, because on the sleeves, you have this big section here of stockinette. But once you get to the top, you have to do the cabling. And the cabling was so, so easy to remember. It was like... I think like 12, a 12 row repeat. Um, like I said, easy to remember. And um, even the body has some kind of intrigue to keep you going. It's not just stockinette. I think this is so clever of her. She has cabling on the, uh, the part in between the ear front and back. And it goes seamlessly into the ribbing detail. And it does the same thing for the cuff. The detail goes all the way down the arm, and then it seamlessly goes into your cuff. And also, you guys, I don't know why people don't do this more, but this little, like, pearl row between the body and the and the, the um, collar is so cute. <laughs> I love it. Oh, I keep looking at myself over here because I love the way it looks on me. <laughs> I'm so happy with it. Um, yeah. <laughs> I can't wait to wear this. It's it's too warm to wear it still. Uh, actually, it's been a bit cooler here. Like in the morning, it's been in the 60s, and it's just so refreshing walking out the door to go to work, and you don't feel instantly muggy. It's just, it's actually cool outside. Um, but next week, it's supposed to be like 96 degrees again, so. <sighs> Transition season sucks. <laughs> I don't want to take the sweater off. I'll probably keep it on, even if I haven't cut the ends. I still need to block it, like I said. But, um, yeah. Favorite sweater of the season? Probably. Probably. I do also have another finished object that I don't have with me to show you. Um, I was commissioned to make a Baby Yoda. Um, and I found a pattern. It was free, um, by Larissa Mason, Make Kid. I'll put her name down below. Um, it, I, I, I think it turned out really, really um, good, and the person who commissioned it really likes it too, so. There's a little bit of crochet content, even though you don't actually get to see it, because I've already sent it off. <laughs> um, 
but yeah, that's all my finished objects from August and some of September. Uh, let's just go into into whips. What do you say? Yeah. Um, my first one, I guess I can show you. Oh, put all this yarn up. Is a reoccurring, not reoccurring. It's a resurfaced work in progress. <laughs> It's actually from last episode I talked about the this, the Ovis socks. Um, if you want to hear my complaining about it, not the pattern itself, it's more complaining about doing color work socks um, and tension and stuff like that. Basically, I knit the second sock and it didn't fit, even though this one fits really, really well. So I scrapped that and put it aside and didn't cast on the second sock for the second time. Um, until last night. I had finished this sweater. I had just finished the witching hour sweater. Um, I've just went into sweater fever even though it was still warm outside and now I'm kind of tired of making sweaters at this point and I just said the word sweater like a really large amount of times. <laughs> um, anyway, so yeah, I wanted to do something that wasn't another sweater. <laughs> so I, I'm reattempting the Ovis sock sock number two. <laughs> Um, it's not much. I just did the cuff last night, and then this morning I started a little bit of the, the sheep color work section. Um, so, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed that it works out this time. Because I don't know if I have the mental capacity to try for the third time. Whew. Um, and if you want to know more details about it, let's see what page it is on so I can talk about it. I didn't write down what page it was on. Okay, here it is. This one is by The Petite Knitter, and I'm doing a lot of modifications. I'm starting out with a 72 stitch sock, and then once I get done with the leg part, um, I switch to a 64 stitch sock because um, I found that my leg needed to be a little bit bigger than my actual like foot part, so that's what I did. Um, and then I did, 1.75 millimeter for the ribbing and the toe and the heel and then the like color work parts so anywhere where there's color work I used a 2.25 millimeter and those are on nine inch circular needles yes and for reference my foot is a it's nine inches around my foot um, I usually wear like a nine and a half or a ten shoe depending on what kind of shoot is. Um, so yeah, I will be working on those again. Hopefully next time I talk to you guys, it'll actually be done, both of them, and I can show you them on my feet. <laughs> so that's exciting. Um, but even more exciting is my next work in progress, which again, you guys have not heard me talk about. Starting to think I need to do this more often because I knit things so quickly. Oh, this took me a week to knit. A week. <laughs> I think it's the fastest sweater I've ever made. Um, I cast it on on the 10th, I think. Yeah, September 10th, and I finished it on the 17th, which was yesterday. Don't ask me how I did it. I think that the yarn's just... Um, really nice to work with and I was really like excited about the charts or the cabling and stuff I don't know perfect storm happened and I finished it in a week now I don't know what to do with it because I can't wear it for another like month why do I do this <laughs> um anyway let me get this other work in progress out I haven't touched it in a while um no for no particular reason I just stopped for a bit I'm making the Great Gingham by Jessie Mae. This was something I've had my eye on for a while, but I never actually thought I would like buy the yarn and cast it on. I just enjoyed looking at it, like on Instagram and stuff. But last episode I talked about yarn that I had acquired from um, Webb's website, the, the yarn yarn store or something what is it called i talked about it in um extent at the end of my last episode so if you're really wanting to know it's this is what it looks like you can hear me talk about it 
last episode, um, I bought it to make my own cardigan design, which is still in the works. I finished the chart for the, all the like the the mosaic details and stuff, but I just did not like the way this yarn played with each other. Um, there wasn't enough high contrast, and I could barely see this beautiful thing that I created with my brain skull and. I just it was kind of disappointing the, the subtlety just wasn't jiving with me so um yeah I decided to save that pattern for when I have better yarn for it I'm planning on going to a yarn shop um it's a bit of a drive away but m me and my friend are gonna head up there sometime soon and um go by and I want to actually be able to like hold the yarn in my hand and see how the colors play together that way instead of trusting that there's a high enough contrast from a like um, online picture of it so yes but I decided that I still wanted to use that for a sweater so I did some searching and I realized that the great gingham was kind of a perfect fit I love the I love gingham pattern like just by itself. I, I like plaid. Gingham is extra points for me. I think just the simplicity of two colors makes me really happy. Um, anyway, here it is. I finished two sleeves. And um, one thing I do notice is my floats do like pucker a bit, but I'm hoping that blocking will help that out. I, I'm knitting these completely, sorry, it's something in my eye. I knitted these completely doing um, one strand in my right and one strand in my left. So uh, if you've been here, if you were here last episode, you heard me talking about my Ovis socks and how three strand of color work forced me to uh, learn color work in both hands. And I figured I, I figured out that I actually kind of like it for certain patterns, like for the witching hour swan show, I stuck to continental style for both strands. Um, it was it was just easier for my brain because the chart was actually I don't really even know why I preferred it with that chart versus this chart. But when I started knitting this, I realized that I just really I just really enjoyed doing um, one English strand and one continental strand. I don't know why. Who knows? But, yeah. So I've got two sleeves done. I'm making the size... Um... Medium. I'm making the size medium. And, um... The needle size is 3.75 for the body and 3.5 for the ribbing. I wrote down that the my gauge is slightly larger, but I picked a size down from what I technically should have made so I mean I think it'll turn out okay the nice thing about starting a pattern with sleeves is that it kind of acts as your gauge swatch because if you get you start with a cuff you know and you get to like right here you can kind of see where your gauge is at and if it's nowhere where you want it to be, ripping out is just as much of an ordeal as ripping out a gauge swatch. I, I've, okay, that depends on whether you try to do a in the round gauge swatch with the trick where you can just like carry the float in the back. I've tried that and it is a pain in the butt. <laughs> so I just avoid that at all costs. If I am gauge swatching for something that's in the round, I gauge swatch flat and then just keep in mind that my tension is going to be a little bit tighter in the round since there's no purling it's just knitting so that's usually what I do but anyway it's really nice to be able to do just sleeves first this is a bottom up pattern with separated sleeves only ever done that once in my life and it was for my husband's cable sweater that I made him last year um, or earlier this year don't remember when that was but I remember the raglan, the raglan like decreases being a little bit hard for me, but I think that that was mostly because that sweater involved cables. But on the other hand, this one involves color work. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> um, 
but yeah. I'm excited about that. I'm gonna start the body soon here. I think I'm gonna try and finish the Ovis sock first and, um, and then pick this back up. So that's my work in progress for knitting. I don't think I have any other knitting works in progress. I do. If you follow me on Instagram at the crafting sparrow with underscores between the and um, the crafting part, I it'll be in the description box if you want to check it out. If you don't already follow me, um, uh, if you if you do follow me, you will see that I I posted yesterday. I think it was a picture of all my little hexy pups from my beekeeper quilt, um, which I didn't write down who the um, designer is of that, but I'll have. I'll have a, again description box and the, there'll be like a bar that went by like usual with the designer's name anyway i've been making the beekeeper's quilt for a while now um beginning of the year i think i started it as like a palette cleanser project and just using my fingering weight yarn for my scrap bucket and um yeah i hadn't done some in a while i've had projects to work on back to back to back recently and as I said, I was kind of tired of making sweaters after I finished this one. So instead of like jumping into something else and trying to figure out what to use with the yarn I have in my um, stash over here, I just decided to break out some of my fingering weight like scrap balls. And I made like six of them that day. So <laughs> they're really nice. And I mean, they're only taking like, I think it's 20 to 30 minutes per uh they're called Hexy Puff. It's the little top. I'm gonna go grab one. In case there's anybody new. Here's my bucket. My bucket of fluffy pillows. Um, let me grab one for you guys. Sometimes if I run out of yarn, I will, or if I think I'm not gonna have enough to finish it, is ideal because that means that yarn is finished with <laughs> I will just do half of it in one color and then I'll finish the other half in another which makes really cool like um puffs that are a little bit different I have a couple of them I don't know why I can't find them right now at this moment oh well this one's the same um but most of them are just one color and it's basically just like starting out at the bottom with a certain number of stitches and then you do increases, and then um, you do the same amount of decreases, and then you cast off, and you, f you fill them up with stuff. You can fill them up with like um, stuffing, like your classic stuffing, or I wanted it to be a truly scrappy blanket project. I'm stuffing them with yarn scraps, so which is really cool because once you finish a hexy puff, and there's a, like the tail end of you know after you weave in your end, you snip off the tail. And then that tail gets put back into the stash that gets stuffed into the hexy pops. <laughs> it's really satisfying. <laughs> um, so yeah, I made like six of those uh, last week some, at some point, and I'm probably gonna make a lot more in this coming time where I'm not really wanting to do big sweater projects and I don't really have anything else planned. <laughs> um, so yeah, you'll probably see a lot more of those. I won't show you the individual one because when I get done with the one, I just throw it in that bucket and I don't remember which one I just finished. I just added to a collection. And I meant to count how many I had made before this podcast was recorded, but I did not. But my guess is... I don't know. You guys, guess how many are made in here? Can you put in the comments how many you think there are? I'm curious to see what you guys think. This is all of them right here. My guess is, I'm going to guess 52. <laughs> That's my guess. Um, and I think you have to have like over 300 to make a proper like throw blanket. So it's definitely a long term project. Um, and then my other project that I've been working on is my cross stitch project. And I should have taken it out of the frame, but I did not. Last time I showed you guys this, I had just finished all the, like the little creatures. I actually don't think I'm going to take it out of the frame because I have it in the perfect spot to finish the lettering. So since last time I started some of the lettering, I did the word enjoy and then there's 
this is the word all, and then I have the E left in B, and what it's going to say is enjoy the little things. So the, um, the word little is like really big in the center here, and it's in like two shades of green, and then things is a bit smaller down here, and like another brown color. And then all that I'll have left to do after that is the backstitching, which I'm really excited to do because I haven't done backstitching before on a cross stitch project. Um, just, I don't know why, I just never have. And it's really cool to see people's like photos of before and after they do backstitching. It adds so much detail. So I'm excited about that. Because you guys can't even tell, but that little weird shape here is actually a spider. <laughs> but it's little legs or back stitches, so yeah. That's that's it. That's that's my whips and my finished objects and as far as acquisitions go, I don't have any. I guess technically the drops air would have been acquisitions, but I've already used it. Uh, I haven't bought any yarn, I don't have any waiting, like in the mail. So as far as future plans go, it's kind of a rough, rough future plan because um, I don't have the yarn yet for it. Obviously I want to get yarn for my cardigan design. Don't know when I'll actually get the yarn for that, but that is on the docket. Um, I also want to make a vest. I like really want to make a vest. I don't know what is compelling me to want to make one, but I just do. I've never made one before and I think that they'd be really cute over a dress or um, as like a transition season piece like just by itself with like some jeans or whatever so let me know if you guys have any like vest recommendations I prefer something with like texture not just like plain vest maybe not color work I don't know if it's really cute who knows um, so yeah kind of maybe have a vest work some progress next time who knows and then, also I really want to make Ozetta's new cardigan called the Traveler's Cardigan. Might, might get the yarn for that. Um, and then also, I have, like I said, three balls left of that drops um, air in this color. And I think I might make a shawl with it. I don't know. Maybe. I looked at patterns last night for vests with this yarn. Or like similar gauge with this yarn. And I saw a couple that I thought might be cute, but I don't really know if I want to vest in this yarn. So, I don't know. Those are my rough future plans. Um, as far as like personal stuff, if you don't want to stick around, completely understand. Thanks for listening as far as you did. And I appreciate your um, just support and have a lovely next month. If you're sticking around, um, I have some details about D&D &D and about what I've been playing, like, video game-wise, what I've done, like, socially for once. <laughs> um, so, yeah, get something cozy, work on something or whatever you want to do, and I'll just get started talking um, after I take a big gulp of water. It's a lot of, it's a lot of talking for me. So, my birthday was um, September 4th. And um, it was a wonderful birthday. I turned 26, and uh, I was in town. Uh, I was at my um, at my hometown where my parents and most of my family are. Um, I went up there for the third for a family event, and so I was already near all my family. And but on on the fourth. I actually, me and my husband went up to uh, Clemson where we went to university and we uh, grabbed some Pacific Rim pizza from Mellow Mushroom and took it out to one of the like picnic pavilions out in the experimental forest that surrounds the Clemson campus area and um, just kind of like reminisce because we used to go hiking in there all the time. And it was raining but it can't ruin my mood because I love the rain <laughs> and the picnic table we had um, at the picnic table we ate at had a like shelter so we weren't like sitting in the rain eating our pizza <laughs> but it was really cozy there's like a stream that goes by it and um, you hear in the rain hit the like the wooden roof it was so amazing um, and then the rain lightened up a bit and I, I took my camera out I had my macro lens 
and took some photos of like mushrooms that we found. We found this really cool, actually found a few really cool mushrooms. One is called a coral fungus, which if you don't know what it is, it is exactly what it sounds like. It's fungus that looks like coral. It looks so cool. Um, and then uh, actually on our way in, driving to the picnic area, on like this little hilltop, um, there was this mushroom that was like, it, I'm not even exaggerating, it was the size of my personal pizza that I ate. <laughs> it was huge. And so Tyler was like, okay, we'll drive past it now, we'll eat our pizza, but when we go to leave, we need to stop and look at this mushroom. <laughs> so we did. We, we hiked around a bit in like light drizzle rain and then we left and, and stopped by and went to look at that mushroom. It was so cool. Um, yeah, I got to take really cool pictures of like rainy, moody stuff. Um, uh, so yeah, that was really nice. And then we, um, uh, on our way home that day, we stopped by and saw his parents and uh, his nephews were there already. So we got to spend some time with um, his nephews and that was really nice. Uh, and then we went home and then I had the next day off because Labor Day, which typically happens and I'm very blessed to be able to say that I get long weekends like basically every birthday weekend. <laughs> um, I don't even remember, what did I even do that Monday? I think I just like hung out, played video games with my friends. It was just, it was wonderful. Um, and then as far as like social stuff goes, the next weekend my friend came down and went to a like arts and craft festival that my town had going on. I didn't buy anything. Of course, I was looking for like fiber arts related stuff. Really hoping for some yarn shop like pavilion things. But we went and walked by basically every single um, vendor tent and not a single person. Not a single person was selling yarn. Dang it. <laughs> there was one pavilion tent that had, um, I don't know why I'm saying pavilion, vendor tent that had like her hand knitted stuff. Um, which was cool, but I was not interested in what other people knitted. I was interested in buying the materials to knit my own stuff. <laughs> it was still really cool though, seeing all these beautiful like handcrafted items. There was some really cool like wood, like driftwood crafted water fountains for outdoor like furniture stuff, like crazy cool stuff, like moss and things like that. Um, and what else was cool? There was a, quite a few like macrame vendors that had made like macrame plant hanger things. And I was tempted to buy one, but I might learn macrame for one. And two, my mother-in-law mentioned, she knows how to do macrame. She mentioned making me one as well, so. Um, but yeah, it was still really cool to see all these beautiful creations that people had made and then, you know, bringing them, bringing them down and, and just, you know, trying to earn some money off of their creations. So it was really cool. Um, that's all I've been doing like socially as far as like going out and doing stuff. Um, video games wise, if you're interested, I've been playing Fall Guys again. <laughs> um, I played it a little bit when I, when it first came out and it was really big on like Twitch and stuff and it was kind of janky. People were cheating, you know, just like floating to the end of the, of the race and, um, if you play with your friends, you weren't really actually playing with them. You were just in the same game as them. And if you died, you just had to sit there and watch your friends go through the rest of the courses. It was dumb. Um, but they updated it, and they did so much cool stuff. It's like when you're in a, a squad like match, your teammates actually like add up points together. And that determines whether you qualify for the next round. It's really cool. And they have like really cool skins now. And... It's just really fun. It's just a goofy game. <laughs> it's so goofy. We have a blast. My husband um, plays with me and my brother plays and a couple of other friends. You can only have four people playing at once, so we like rotate out. I've been doing that. And um, yeah, so I've been playing those as our video games. And then as far as D&D goes, I have been elbow deep in writing lore. <laughs> uh, if you don't know, I've only ever played, I've technically played two, but one of them was a one-shot, um, but 
majority of my D&D experience is me playing a rogue who is a water genasi. Her name is Sildove, and I just, like, briefly wrote out that her hometown's name was, like, Coralora, and I didn't really write much else about the actual city she lived in. And my DM just, like, picked a spot to put it on the world that he created, and um, that was that. But recently, I've been really wanting to dig down into that city and just, like, create it. Actually, like, map it out, um, talk about, like, the different classes, like, the high-class people, the lower-class people, how, what are the social norms for them, um, uh, my, my character, like I said, she's a rogue, she grew up in the lower class section, and there's, like, um, guilds, there's three guilds that are in there, and what do each of those guilds specialize in, and how do they interact with the high, the higher class, um, and, uh, what are their funeral rituals, what, what create, what are, what is their city known for, which is, like, wealth, and, and, like, um, they have a really well-known, shopping district that people come from all over the world and I, I've just been having a blast going into that it's so much fun <laughs> just creating just this very small section of this world that my character is is going around and doing adventures in um, and my DM probably won't ever use any of this information because it's underwater and me and one other person one other player character are the only ones that can um, well she's a air genasi so it's not that she can breathe underwater, it's just that she doesn't have to breathe. <laughs> um, anyway, I've been having fun with that. <laughs> but most of my time has been knitting this time around. I've, as you can tell, I fin had a lot of finished objects. Um, and, uh, yeah, so. But I do other things as well. <laughs> um, Okay, that, I think that's it actually now. So, thanks for hanging out. Oh, actually, one more thing. I have been seeing a lot of YouTube videos out there about, like, getting ready for fall, and there's, like, fall inspiration, and what they plan on making for fall. And what I really want to do is make a bonus video for you guys that involves just all the sweaters that I've made. Um, and just, like, talking about how they've held up, what I liked, what I didn't like, and just basically what I'm saying is, would you guys be interested in that? Just let me know in the comments, um, or, you know, wherever, and just let me know what you think. It'll, if I do that, it'll probably be either at the end of September or sometime in October, so. But anyway, thank you for sticking around and listening to me and, um, just being a part of my knitting journey. Uh, I just kind of didn't really want to record today but as soon as I got started I got really excited about talking about these things and um I just really appreciate that there's people out there that want to hear me so I love all of you and I will catch you guys next time bye